heavy fighting between Armenia and Azerbaijan has continued for another day in the disputed region of Nagorno-Karabakh. It comes as the Turkish president called on Armenia to immediately withdraw. They in turn have warned that Ankara's involvement could destabilize the region. Nagorno-Karabakh is considered part of Azerbaijan by the international community, but has been under Armenian control since the 1990s. The conflict in the Caucasus Mountains has remained unresolved for more than three decades, with periodic bouts of fighting. Martial law has been declared amid the violence in some parts of Azerbaijan, as well as in Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh. Russia, the United States and the United Nations have all called for an immediate ceasefire and talks to stabilize the situation. Meanwhile, the Turkish President, uh, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan continues to pledge his country's full support to the government in Azerbaijan. Here's what Recep Tayyip Erdogan had to say in the last hour. I condemn once again Armenia, which has attacked Azerbaijan's territory. Turkey will continue to support its friend and brother wholeheartedly and with whatever means are possible. It is time to end the crisis in this region. This region will once again have peace and calm following the swift abandonment of all Azerbaijan's territories. Any measures or propositions beside this will be unfair and unjust. President Erdogan there. Well, I'm joined now by Zaur Gasimov from the University of Bonn, who analyzes relations between Russia and Turkey. So thank you very much for joining us. Let's just talk about why this is actually happening right now. We had a flare up in July, but why do you think this is all escalating at the moment? Um, yeah, I, I can just second it. Uh, indeed, uh, we had uh, several flare-ups in July, four years ago also, and uh, two days ago. Uh, but what is new of this flare-up is a dimension. And um, I mean, we, we, we should accept that, that the international community, the Minsk group of the Organization of Security, Collective Security, um, that exists since 30 years uh, failed to find a solution, uh, a peaceful solution for the conflict. And uh, what we see now that the format of the Minsk group is going to be changed. So uh, I guess um, Russia would, uh, would take the initiative and bring both sides to the, to the dialogue and um, find I, I somehow... I for Russia, it's not just the initiative, is it? It, it, it wants to be a, a significant player in, in all of this in terms of uh, having influence on both sides. It is a significant player. I would even say that it's the most significant player. I mean, look, uh, there are three co-chairs of the Minsk group, France, US and uh, Russian Federation. But uh, the Russian uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, uh, phoned uh, yesterday um, his Azerbaijani Armenian counterpart, his Turkish counterpart. Um, there is no information about any talks with the French and the US colleagues. And that would be the logic of the Minsk group. But it was not the case. And uh, what the sec press secretary of uh, the Russian president told today that Russia is uh, keeps touch uh, with with Ankara on this uh, issue. So, how is uh, Russia or Moscow uh, reacting uh, to to the way that Ankara is is uh, speaking about this conflict and, and and saying that they will put their full support behind Azerbaijan? I don't. Uh, I don't see here any uh, contradiction. Uh, Moscow uh, cooperates with Ankara quite uh, successfully in uh, Syria. Uh, somehow, also in Libya, the interests are different, but there is a cooperation uh, also uh, with some extent in Iraq and Azerbaijani-Armenian conflict. The area of the Nagorno-Karabakh would become the new platform for Turkish-Russian uh, cooperation. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. Zaur Gasimov, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.